So guys, uh, we are back. Uh, so we're gonna continue on doing uh, this 2.5 update expenses percentage. Percentage. So basically, uh, this function over here, what we're gonna do? We're gonna calculate uh, every uh, every single uh, expense percentage. Percent. So basically, this function is gonna calculate every single expense percentage. Meaning that every single expense percentage of this twenty percent, fifty percent, and ten percent. All of this we're going to calculate uh, in this function. So why don't we name the function uh, update expense expense percentages something like that. So we copy that. Copy and we paste it down here equal to and we need to declare this function. So, okay, the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're going to update, we're going to uh, basically update or calculate true all single uh, expenses every single expenses percentage what <laughs> percentage so how we're going to do that is we're going to call all the items and we're going to uh we don't have bus because we're going to calculate expense, just decl declare right way expenses that we're gonna use for each, where for each expense. So for each expense, what we're gonna do, we're going to calculate every uh, single expenses percentage, meaning that we're gonna, uh, create a percentage variable equal to you're gonna create a, a a function over here which this function gonna expenses percentages that these expenses gonna have gonna pass uh, argument of percentage itself each one of the percentage and also we're gonna pass the value of each expense and also we're gonna pass the uh, totals of income why total of income so if you want to calculate the expenses of each expense like the car loan the rent the bike loan this what, what you uh able to see here 20 percent 50 percent and 10 percent where we, where did you, we get this value from it's easy the car loan is 200 dollars so 200 dollars out of income of 1000 dollars in percentage is 20 percent so the math around that is that 200 dollars uh, times with one uh, 100 divided by the total income 1000 that's why that's how we're gonna get 20 percent so uh, inside this uh, cop expenses percentages, uh, we're gonna do the inside this. We're gonna do the calculation to uh, to calculate each and every one of the expense in the expenses list. So uh, one we get the return percentage. The uh, basically the the calculation percentage what we want to do is we want to set our current percentage of each uh, expense going to be equal to the return percentage so basically we're going to update uh, the current percentage right if i can spell right percentage so uh, up here we have to uh, create or calculate. We, we basically have to calculate every expenses 
percentage. If I can spare on. <laughs> so uh, we declare our call in here, which uh, our function gonna have the argument of percentage. We also gonna have argument of value and also total income. So in this uh, function, what we're going to do, we're going to check first whether the total, we're going to check first whether the total income is more than zero. If it's more than zero, then we want to calculate. If it uh, somehow less than zero, then what we're going to do, we're going to set uh, that particular uh, expense percentage uh, gonna be equal to negative one. So over here, what we're gonna do, we have to calculate the percentage. So the percentage, like I said earlier is, like I said earlier, is simply value we divide by a total incomes and then with times with 100. So, and make sure uh, not to forget to return the percentage. So that's how we calculate each and every expense that we have in expenses array. So that's how we calculate all three of these. Then after we calculate it, so what we need to do next is to display all the calculate percentage. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to get all the HTML elements uh, class that basically class that basically going to uh, contain the percentage of each uh, expenses. So which class is it? Okay, this is the class, detail expenses percentage, right? So this detail expenses percentage gonna be the class that hold this percentage value over here. So all three of them actually use the same class, right? Detail expenses percentage. So if, uh, if let's say, So when I check class of detail percentage. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna get all of them at once. So if let's say, uh, so I'm gonna get all, let me just write this code first, then I will, I will try to explain to you guys. Percentage, come on man percentage html elements element equal to document dot uh, query selector then we're gonna, we're gonna get the this class over here copy detail expenses percentage so go back to our over here then we're gonna add our uh, expenses. Maybe we name it as expense ditch, something like that. Place it here. So come back here. All them string. So expense percentage. So basically, what uh basically what uh, i did here is that uh i'm trying to get all available uh expense of detail expenses percentage meaning that if i have three over here then i'm gonna have three detail expenses percentage right so that's what i aiming for so if let's say i'm trying to get if i try 
uh, if I only uh, get so this is supposed to be all over here. So if you use all over here, it's going to return all uh, division or any element that have class of detail expenses percentage. So basically, right now if I do this uh, coding over here, it will return three detail expenses percentage. The one that contain the first one over here, second and third one. Basically, the one that contain uh, the the element that con that, that hold the percentage of twenty percent, fifty percent, also ten percent that you can see over here. So why are we gonna why why we have to do that? If every time we add new, the reason why we need to get all instead of one. If I only get one, I can't basically pinpoint which one of these gonna be the one that I try to fetch here. So let's say if he, I only put like this. So uh, the one that it returns to me, is it gonna be the first one? Is it gonna be the second one? Or is it gonna be the third one? That's why uh, the, the reason, that's the reason why we can't do only just one. We need to get all that available. So once we get all that available, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna we're gonna look through. Basically, we're gonna look through all uh, list of expenses, HTML elements, elements. Basically, that available. Basically, that available, and we're going to display each expenses uh, percentage so to do this we to do this we're going to uh, use for loop where we're going to declare let i equal to zero where i less than you can basically use all the percentage html elements here to to determine the length of the uh, available uh, basically available expenses but I think the right way for us to know how many expense uh, in our expenses array would be uh, directly we check the length of expenses array in our data storage, right? So this is how we should do it. Uh, yep, I should be less than data, all items, uh, expenses length, which we check. Uh, cross check the length of expenses so the last one should be i plus plus so basically what we do here is that uh, we know for sure that when we run this it will return four right so i must be less than four meaning that it's not equal to four so it should be zero one two three it's this should be written three like the length should be written three sorry so it's not going to be going to be include three so it's going to be zero one two so we know for sure that we have uh element that index with zero so id of zero id of one id of two so car loan is id of zero car rent is id of one byte loan is id of two so what we can do here is we're going to check if data dot all items dot expenses the first expenses the expenses equal to i of uh, i percentage so basically we're going to check if the first expenses percentage is it more than zero if it's more than zero then we're going to display the percentage if it's less than the zero what we're going to do we're going to it's going to be i uh, text content equal to we're going to display dot 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 meaning that if uh this car loan is uh the percentage is not 20 percent it's zero percent if it's zero percent it's going to return uh blah 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 or less than zero percent is going to return this uh, three dash over here but if let's say 
uh, the percentage is more than zero, then what we're going to do is, what we're going to do is that for that particular uh, class of detailed expenses percentage, we're going to update the tax content equal to the percentage. So data all item dot expenses I dot percentage we're gonna plus with percentage sign. So basically over here we know for sure that we already try to get all the we trying to get the query of all detail expenses percentage available. So we know that this going to return three uh, array of a uh, three element in it the id of zero id of one and id of three so that's why we pair it with our expenses percentage so for expenses percentage so for expenses percentage uh id of zero uh, if more than zero then we're going to replace uh, its own element of detail expenses percentage of zero tax content with uh, the uh, increment of zero so that's how we're going to do it so that's basically uh, how update as, uh, expense percentage works so if you look back if you try our budget web app trying to save project 1000 see here then if we add brand uh, of 500 yep it's working it's written 50 percent if maybe you put loan around 200 yep it's working so uh let's so let's uh proceed to our next functions that let's proceed to our next function what should we do next so if we if we go to read me so we already done all of this at new item so the next thing we should focus on is delete item so delete an item basically uh we know for sure that this is going to be the same right calculate budget and uh calculate budget and updating each percentage of each expense and display percentage of each expenses this is going to be the same so basically uh what we do here so basically uh these two functions are going to be the same and we're going to apply this uh in our delete item function also so the differences is these two up here uh, we have to remove data from the budget storage and also we have to remove displaying the deleted data from the ui that's the only two difference so let's start doing that so we're going to document basically at an event listener of click uh, so whenever we click on this button of a uh, delete over here then uh it's going to delete the item so query selector dot add of event listener of click and we're going to name this as delete existing item something like that so what class that we need to put it here if you guys think that we need to put i mean like this class right detail expense expenses delete is the one that hold the the power that hold the the delete button over here right and also detail income uh, delete is the one that hold some uh the part the button over here but let's say if i try to take this and place it inside of this 
side of this, it should return me error. So as you can see here, uncaught type error cannot read property at event listener of null. The reason why it says it it's written null because that because that detail income underscore the delete class is not available right now. That's the only reason. It's not available. This block of code is not available right now. You can see for sure that we don't have any and detail income delete. This block of code will be added only once after uh, user input their data over here and hit enter or submit their uh, inputted data. So that's why the system said that what are we trying to add event listener to? Uh, it's written something that equivalent to now. That's why we cannot call this detail income to delete. So the how we can do this is that we're going to call its parent instead of directly call this detail income delete or detail income delete or detail expenses delete we're gonna call its parent but we cannot call uh, this parent in content income list or content expenses list but if we do something like that let's say we call only this this parent then if we hit a uh, button over here uh, we we're not able to delete uh, anything in here, right? Because we we only just call this uh, income list parent, but we can still make it work. Make it work. How to make it work? We have to. We need to have two. Uh, click. We, we need to have. Basically, we need to have two. Uh, a delete function, uh, one that. Uh, handles income and one that handle expenses. That's not what we should do. That's not what we sh uh, we should follow. So uh, the only one way for us to able to do this in one motion is that we take all we take the parent that contain all of this. So the parent that contain all of this all of this is bottom underscore part dash content. So copy that. Go back to our DOM string and declare as all item list, something like that. So save. So over here, instead of calling this, all things dot all item list. So once we do that, we can copy all of this, copy, go all the way up and paste our code over there. Delete all this in front, save space. So instead of here, uh i don't know if you guys know about every time you use at event listener of click you're gonna get uh, uh an element of or, or attribute or argument event uh, so we're gonna use this event uh variable over here so item type item type id gonna clear item ID so first we're gonna get item ID uh, using event target we're gonna try to get the item ID using event the target so item type what the hell item type ID it's going to equal event dot target dot let just go with uh, event dot target dot id so if i try to console log this okay we try to console log this item type dot id 
So, if, uh, for those who don't know how to use this event.target.id, it's basically simple. Uh, I will try to explain to you in most simplest way I can, uh, I possibly possibly can. So, this is how we're gonna do it. We know for sure that uh, every time this block uh, appended to our web app, it will uh, it will comes with ID of the uh, income of the I or the item itself. So if we have if you put project, let's say uh, project one, one thousand, then this project one is gonna have its own uh, income dash what ID, right? So the same goes for if we add ran five hundred. And also this rank gonna have its own expenses. So every this block of code gonna have its own ID that comes with it. So since we already add this, what we do is that uh we know for sure that every time we click on this bottom part content, it will initiate this delete existing item, right? So this event dot target ID. So every time I click on the uh, box on the division, I mean that every time I click on this block of code, in this block of code or this block of code, it will return the item dot ID. So that's why it return uh, item dot ID right there. Can see it written expenses. Okay. We don't want that. What we want is that when we click on this button right here, it will return the ID. So the way to do that is that you uh, apply what we call as parent node. I I think I'm not the the perfect person to uh, explain how parent node works, but I will explain the best I could in this scenario that I have here. So, once we declare parent node dot id, parent node basically you can declare this parent node like uh, more than one times. This is how this basically how you can uh, use this parent node, but I will show it one by one. How much we need in this uh, in our case? So I declared once per node. So if I try to do it again, oops! If I try to do it again, you can see right now. If I click on to the uh, this block of code before I click anywhere inside of this, it's going to return me some. Uh, income it's going to return me this ID, right? But right now, if I click the way that I click uh, before, it's not going to return me the ID. But this time around, every time I click on the second level that comes after the, this division, this division we can we can say it's our first level. So the first, uh, this is the first level of element. The second level of element is this division class, this division class, and this 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 division class. If let's say I have a image uh, image element over here, then this image over here is gonna be the second level of element. So right now we have three second level of element over here. This uh, division class of detail income description, detail income value, and detail income delete. So every time I click on this second level division class is going to return me income dot new item so let me prove that to you guys so if i click onto the first level it's not going to return it's not going to return me the id anymore like before because i already added the parent dot node so if i click on the value you see it will return income dash zero and also if i click on the button itself it will become income 
0.0. So, in order for me to make sure that I it will only return income, it will it will only return the ID. I have to make sure that my second level of detail income dot delete have the third level of uh this one is the first level without without applying the parent node if i add one parent node uh, it's gonna uh, append it to the second level so all the second level if i click on all the second level it's gonna return me uh, this id but i we don't want that what we want is that uh, we only want this income dot delete uh, to be written some uh, this id not the the first not the second level so we need to introduce the third level that's why i put uh, a blank uh, paragraph over here so if you see like this this is first level second level this is the third level and detail income delete is the only second level class that contain that have the third level uh, other than that we don't have any third level in here only this p is the third level right so uh keep that in mind with that if i declare another parent node so this parent node is uh, if you add just one parent node meaning that you just came inside uh the second level if you add another parent node meaning that you want to get inside the third level so with this code right now we try it project one 1000 if you try to click on the value itself on the container it's not going to do anything unless you click on the button itself it will return income dash the zero this is what we wanted all along so that's how parent node works but it's not going to work if somehow you have uh let's say in this description somehow you have uh uh additional uh third level element in here maybe you you have a tag over here so if you have something like this then uh this is not gonna work because every time people click on this a tag it will returns this uh id and also every time people click on this paragraph will return this id so make sure you only have one uh Third level of uh, element in your block of code over here just to make sure that only this uh, class of ETL income delete there this is the only one that have the third level of element in it with that out of the way then that's how we get the item type of ID so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna check uh, whether uh, the item id item type id is valid or not so item item type id is valid or not if it's valid the first thing that we're going to do is when is we're going to split by we're going to split by item type and also item id if you look closely every time i click on this button it will return oh sorry uh we put console log back over here item the id so if you look back if i add if i click on this it will return the item type of income dash the id of the income the reason is that we specify it here right this one is for income this one is for expenses then we we know for sure that it will uh, it will return income or sorry it will return income or expenses of uh, uh for the item type and the id depends on the item uh the idea of the item itself so the first thing that we need to do is we need to split them so i'm going to declare a split 
uh, ID which item the type ID dot split we're going to split where are we going to split of course we're going to split at this dash uh, symbols right after we split it we're going to assign too many s no no it's not too many s like s letter s not s you know what i mean so we're gonna assign i uh, assign item type to let item type let item type equal to split id the first uh, array of the split id right the first array of, of split id contain the item type whether it's as income or expenses the second array of it uh, contain the uh, item id so let's assign the second array that and just uh, make sure it's in integer uh, value so in order to make sure it's an integer value, it's easy. Uh, like we did before, we just add plus in front of that. Split and should be array of one. So after that, what we're gonna do next is we're going to delete item in our storage, our budget data storage. So, uh, over here, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get all IDs uh, available. We're gonna get all IDs available uh, in given uh, item types, depending on what item types. So let uh, item lot let ids equal to data dot all item uh, item type dot map we're gonna create a new uh, array from this item item dot ID. So uh, this line over here is going to return a new array of available IDs inside. Uh, doesn't matter if it comes array of expenses array. So that's the first thing that we have to do. Next, we're going to check uh, if item ID is present or not. Simple as that. Basically, uh, what we're gonna do is that copy. So basically, what we're gonna do is, is that if it if not if it basically if not it will return negative one. If half, uh, it will return the value associated with the item ID passed into the index of. So if you guys don't know how index of works, you can check on Google on how it works. Basically, the index of work is very simple actually. Let me just write the code first. So in term dot id uh, item dot uh, item index. So ids dot uh, index of item id. So what we do here actually. I will explain to you guys. Basically, what we do here, we do here is that uh, we are cross-checking whether, if let's say the item ID that we have here returned, uh, that we click once we click on the uh, when we click on this one of these uh, three expenses, this one is going to return ID of zero, right? Zero is one. This is two. So if somehow I click on this it return this one is going to return ID of zero so this id is going to check cross reference with this 
item ID that we pass into the index of. If uh, it, if in the IDs, we have the item ID of zero, and then we pass zero, then it's going to be true. If it's true, then it will return the value itself, meaning that it will return zero. So if somehow I put three inside this, and we know for sure that we only have zero, one, two, we don't have three. So three, if you cross check with IDs, we know for sure that in IDs where we cross match, where we cross match with our array of expenses in here, we don't have ID of three. So with that in mind, it will return negative one instead of the value itself. So that's how it works. So with that out of the way, what we're gonna do next is once we check, then after that we can delete item if item ID is not equal equal to negative one or same like I mentioned uh, uh, just now. So item index uh, not item index not equal equal to negative one meaning that uh, we have the same value meaning that it returns true which return the same value so uh, we're going to use splice to delete the info so if you guys don't know about splice like, like i mentioned before anything that you don't know inside of here the coding you can check in google so basically splice X uh, over here stands for the starting at item what you want to delete. Uh, y is basically how many items you want to delete. So uh, this is how we use by So data all items dot this is gonna be the item type dot splice. L we're missing L over here. So item index we want to delete from the starting of item index and we just want to delete one. So that's all when deleting uh, uh when deleting this part is the part we deals with data and this one the part we deals with uh, removing the UI. So this one we're gonna remove deleted item that we just did from above from the UI. So this one we're gonna create a variable of uh, element to delete equal to document dot element by ID. Of course we are, we want to delete uh, element by ID, right? So because we specify the ID of each of the plot of code over here. It's the, uh, represented by its own ID. So that's why we're gonna get get element by ID, where the item type ID, which equals to item type ID. If you remember, this item type ID is when we click onto the button, right? So that's why we pass them here. So in order for us to delete it. We're gonna call parent node works same as before. Just the additional is that we use remove child element to delete. So basically, how the remove child works is that we call the parent node. We we click on to the third level. We call the parent node so that we will delete this and all its container. That's what remove child means. But uh, nevertheless, if you don't, if you want to know more about remove child, you can go to your readme.md. I already put a link of remove child uh, over here in this uh, step by step guide. You can click on that link and and see and learn it for yourself. So that's all for removing the element. And the last two things that we need to do is just update the budget again. Update the budget again. 
So basically, why don't we just copy this too? Copy. Peace. Uh, so this is the same as what we do in add new item. So basically, uh, I can say that our system is finished already by this time. So why don't we test it up? So let's close this, uncomment this. So project one. 1000 okay it works try to delete it yeah it works so project one go to 1000 and then we try to add expenses of rent 500 and another loan around 300 so it works fine but let's say if uh, i delete this rent of course our expenses going to change total Expenses percentage gonna change the overall percentage and also the overall total budget gonna change as well. So if I delete this 500, so expenses gonna be left with 300, and this gonna be uh 500 more. Need that is gonna be 700. So try to delete. Yep, it's working fine. So uh, this is all for our index normal .js. this is how usually people code their javascript program uh, so in next videos i'm going to share with you guys how we can uh, change our code in our index.normal.js and make it more easier to understand easier to read uh, and more neat in uh, basically in general so the reason is because okay let's say if uh, i have changed input if let's say you want to come back to this code and the first thing that you're gonna go through is uh you will go to open the, the first line of course right but from the first line you know for sure that this is the fourth uh fourth steps from all of this so that's why you put a comment in there so people could understand your code right so if let's say this change input container bg that we have over here if i place this like copy if i place this like all the way freaking up here the system still gonna work our system still gonna work it's not gonna it's not gonna change anything the, the system still gonna work but uh the effect that is gonna give us that uh, it be it will be hard for us to to check one by one function. Meaning that if you try to scroll and find the function, then oh man, it's gonna take a lot of time. So the only way for us to make the make the to find the function fast, we just use Control Find, paste, hit enter, and it will bring us to where the function is situated. So uh the normal way of coding the javascript is much more uh i can say it's much more not not very uh i mean list the listing is not very what we call it as not very easy to read to follow through but the the one that i learned from the youtuber is going to be easy you can follow it uh like in no time so with that out of the way uh i think in this next video you can start on we can start on coding that part of code to change this index.normal.js uh, of how people usually code their javascript to the more neat and smart way to code your javascript